Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. As ever, we are working on making a falchion sword. It's a pleasure to have you here. I hope you don't forget to go grab yourselves one of our million subscriber shirts. It's got all of the projects that we've made to get to this point, which is mind blowing. I can't thank you enough for being here watching this video. I can't thank you enough for grabbing yourself one of these shirts. Let's jump right into it. I think I am gonna do a little more inlaying practice. I am doing a bronze inlay and it is working. This is the most unbelievable thing ever. Holy granola! What? That is so cool! Right, let's grind it down. This is the most awesome thing I have ever learned. Look at that. There is bronze inside of a piece of steel and it's stuck there. Let's see if we can pull it out. Let's see how tight it's in there. So what we did, I took this graver from the side and we made a dovetail and then I just hammered in some bronze wire and it just, it just went perfectly. It went right down. This was a 0.95 millimeter wide slot. This is one millimeter wide bronze wire. It sank down and then I hammered the steel back over it and holy moly, it's in there. It, ah, well, <clears throat> that was uh, interesting. Yeah, we'll call it a proof of concept then. We'll get back to the inlaying in just a second. For now though, obviously you remember at the end of yesterday's video, we were tempering. Alex was doing a great job tempering this blade. We had it clamped between two heat sinks so that it wouldn't get too hot. But I think that, uh, I think we've got something rather nice. The first thing that we're gonna be doing today is straightening it, because it has a warp. But the first, first thing that we're gonna do today is break it. I'll do it. Kidding me. <laughs> he does this without warning. <laughs> Considering this one cracked earlier, we probably shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Right, let's have a little inspection. There we go. Some nice hard blows, and it looks pretty good. There's no deformation there. Which is good. There's no denting. It doesn't look to be any sort of chipping or anything like that. And uh, hang on a sec. That was all that was in the eye. Yep, nice aggressive sideways chops aren't doing anything. How about if we use it as a draw knife? Look at those chips. Yep, and now let's have a look at the edge now. Looks pretty good. Looks a solid edge. It looks pretty good. Yeah. I, think, I think we can be happy with that. If it'll do that to a piece of steel. So the next step is we straighten it. So here is how we are gonna do it. We are going to take cutting torch over here, we're gonna set it nice and gently, and we're gonna heat it up from the spine in the area that we need to bend. You have marked out some Sharpie lines for us, which is good. Then, absolutely, water bottle, so that if at any point it gets too hot, you can come up to it and just give it a gentle little, gentle little spritz of water, control the heat. What we wanna do is we wanna get to like a deep straw color, then torch goes down. We'll get you to unlock the vise, drop it, gently close. And so then once we've done that, you'll loosen. And then if we need another heat, you can then tighten it back up. Perfect. Look at that. That'll work a treat. Here we go. I'm gonna start my heating from the spine. This is a tip I picked up from Liam Hoffman. Just a little bit of heat, then you can really do a huge amount to straighten out a blade, which is very surprising. That said, I think I've only tried it once. Starting to get a little straw up here. Just a few more seconds. We got it nice and under control. Okay, so what we're now gonna do, are you ready? Open, thank you. Then hold it. And then now we Titan. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. Open, please. Perfect. Too much. Other way. Here we go. Gently hold it. And open, please. Thank you. 
down. Oh, -hoo -hoo! oh my goodness. Mm, she looking fine. Oh yeah, we'll take that. We'll take. <sighs> Gotta stop doing stuff like that. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna come into the tang area. So obviously we've hardened it. We had clay on the tang, but we don't know for sure if it is hard or if it is soft. And what we do know is for the sake of just a couple of minutes, we can make sure that that tang isn't too hard, is less liable to snap. So I'm gonna start up here and we're gonna bring that heat down. Get a nice dark purple down here. Perfect. Look at that. There we go. We now have a very tough area here, a very supple area here. So we are really making sure that we keep this thing as strong as possible. And so with that tempered, now comes the really exciting part of taking down a huge amount of meat off of this. It is straight, but kind of like globally straight. There are some wiggles in it, so we're gonna have to pay attention to grinding it in to the final straightness, and we also have to pay attention to the thicknesses that James Elmsley has very kindly told me about for a correct feeling falchion. Long and short of it is it's thin. It is a thin, thin blade, thinner than I even thought. Let's get to it. Fantastically, you have noticed that I have been working spine up and this is the first time I've done that and I'm pleased because this is the straightest piece that I have ever made. Beautiful distal taper going down to the tip. I'm very excited because on the spine we have a measurement of at the tang 5.0 millimeters, 12 inches up, 3 millimeters, 4 inches from the tip, 2.2 millimeters. At the tip, about 1.7. In metric that is 195, 120, 90, and about 75 thou. And it is just gorgeous, I'm thrilled. So we have our spine consistency down. This is at 36 grit, still a little bit of go, but it's pretty damn close. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it up on the edge, because this is how I wanna tackle our consistency for the edge thickness. So now edge up, we are going to blend it and get ourselves a beautiful, consistent grind. And I think for the edge, we will go probably to about 30, 40 thousandths of an inch thick. That way we've got plenty of material to work with when we convex it later, which will be after we put in the full up. Let's get this edge sorted first though. Here we go with 60 grit. This is just crazy! Um, that is so light. That isn't a sword. That weighs much <laughs> in a large bowie. It's a, just a big spatula, yeah, you know? Is, spatula yeah. with an edge. <laughs> Straight through a leg. How much does it weigh? 466 grams. It is crazy. It is four millimeters thick here. It is three millimeters thick here. 
do that! I, why don't I just measure it? It's absurd! 4.2 millimeters, 2.75 millimeters, 1.75 millimeters, 1 millimeter at the tip. We have still a 30. I, I'm mixing up metric and imperial. <laughs> we have about a 35 thousandths of an inch thick edge, which is under a millimeter just by a smidge, which means that. Though we have a flat grind now, we're gonna be able to make a beautiful convex to support it as this thing slashes through, hitting bone to avoid it cracking. And now, the next step is a fuller. That, that, that's terrifying me. Terrifying you, I'm, I've got, I'm the one that's got to do, do it. it. <laughs> I'm the one that's about to mess up this project. I'm glad you do. Ah, back to the grinding room. <laughs> That was terrifying. Here's what we've got so far. Woo! Making progress. What do you reckon? Killer fuller. It's a killer fuller. It'll work. The fuller is done. I am done. Alex Steel with his shirt untucked. First ever. I'm gonna get me some fresh air for a second. So the fuller is in there, as I said, and it is about as good as physically, well, about as good as I could possibly do it. I put a lot of time and effort in there. My neck hurts, my head hurts, everything hurts, but it's there. And I'm also pleased that before I went in there, I'm like, okay, no, I'm gonna stop the fuller here instead of where I thought I would stop the fuller up here because I, I got to here and on the one side, it's, it's, it, it, it goes a little too far. So I got to go back on the other side. I go a little too far there and then, oh, 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 oh. And then it ended up, right about there, so I'll take that. The next step is we're gonna put a little convex in for our edge, so we're gonna flip and flatten around. We're gonna use the slack belt. That will get us our apple seed edge. I'm gonna be making sure to keep it straight as we go. And uh, so a little more grinding there, then a little more higher grit work on the rest of the blade, and then it's finally on to, uh, to some more of our favorite things, hand sanding. So this now weighs 419 grams. Oh my goodness. That fuller took out a serious amount of weight and oh my goodness, it's just crazy. We've got a beautiful convex on it, which is nice. It means that hopefully we're gonna have a very well supported cutting edge. And right now our steel is at about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. That's about half a millimeter thick. You wouldn't make a chef's knife with that being the thickness before your primary cutting bevel, but this needs to be tough. So I think it's gonna be about right. The next step on this is, uh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, sorry to say, dear pal Alex, good old, uh, good old Alex, that's, uh, 
It's your turn to do some work to it. Yeah. So it's at an A45 Trizac. Yeah. You've given me a way good finish to start on. Made my life a whole lot easier. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's what he thinks. I left a couple 36 grit scratches in there just for you. It is time for the hand sanding. It sanding. Oh. So to hand sand these fullers, we're going to need a hand sanding stick that is an appropriate diameter. Now we used a one inch small wheel there in the grinding room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Delrin plastic. It's an engineering plastic that I first heard about watching Adam Savage's YouTube videos on the Tested channel. It's some pretty cool stuff. If you guys remember the M9 bayonet, we actually made a handle for one of the things that we made out of this. The best part is it's seriously fun to machine. How cool is that? Look at them go! He's doing that, I am going to get some more inlay practice. You know, how did the hand sanding go? Fine. Took a long time. One fuller down, the rest to go. So only one fuller. And what grit is it at? It's at 600. 600 grit. Clean 600, yeah. Okay. This isn't the one he's just hand sanded. This is the test falchion. And we thought it'd be a kind of a cool idea to see what happens to it if we bend it. It's 1095 steel, um, so that's a higher carbon steel, 0.95% carbon. Uh, higher carbon steel than I usually use. And we thought we would end off this video doing something potentially risky. Don't try this at home. And so, I want to remind you as we do this, to go to alexsteelshop.com and grab yourself an awesome million subscriber shirt. He's got one on too. It's got forged on the sleeve. We also have phone cases and posters and fun things like that. You let me know when we reach 90. And that's 90.